Hey everyone, it's John here. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the top six new functions in Excel 2019. Now it was pretty easy to pick out the top six because in fact, there are only six new functions in Excel 2019. So we're gonna take a look at all of them. Before we get started, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. Now let's get started. The first new function we're gonna take a look at is the concat function. So this is going to allow you to join a range of values together. So for example, here we've got a category ID and a subcategory ID and a product ID. And what we wanna do is join all three of those together and just make a single ID. So we can use the concat function to do that. And with the concat function, you just need to reference at least one range of values that you wanna to join together. So for us, that's going to be all three of these. And then we have optional arguments. So if the values you wanna to join together are not in a single range, you can reference other ranges as well. But for us, we just have the one range here. So we're gonna press enter. And there we go, we get our single ID based on our three IDs here. So you can see that we've got ZB, 62, 62, NF, 63, 67. And that's exactly what we have in our single cell here. And then we can copy that down and we get all our IDs joined together. So that's the concat function. You can use it to join a range of values into a single value. The next function we're gonna take a look at is the text join function. So this is similar to the concat function and it's going to allow us to join data in a range, but it's also going to allow us to separate that data by some delimiter. So in this example, we've got some pizzas here and we've got a list of all the toppings for those pizzas. And what we wanna do is create a comma separated list of those toppings. So we can use the text join function to do that. So the first argument in text join is the thing we wanna separate our list by. And for us, that's going to be a comma followed by a space and we need those in quotation marks. And then the next argument is whether we wanna ignore empty cells or include them. Let's just try include empty cells and see what happens in this example. And then the last argument are the values that you wanna to join together. So for us, that's going to be our topping items here. Now text join also has optional arguments after the third argument and that's just in case you need to join multiple ranges of data. So you can add multiple ranges after your first range. In this example, we just have the one range that we wanna join. So we can close that function off. And you can see the result is the list of our ingredients on our pizza. And notice that at the end here, we have two extra commas there. And that's because we have these two blank cells here. So we can edit our formula here. And instead of false here, what we're gonna do is use true. So we're gonna ignore those empty cells and let's press enter. And you can see that gets rid of those commas at the end there. And let's copy that down. And there we go. We have a list of all the ingredients for our different pizzas. So that's the text join function. It's going to allow us to join data in a range and separate those by some delimiter of our choosing. The next function we're gonna take a look at is the max ifs function. And this is pretty similar to sum ifs or count ifs. And it's going to allow us to find the maximum value in a range based on a given set of criteria. So in this example, we've got some order data here. And what we wanna do is find the maximum total amount for orders that are for the color black and size large. So we can use max ifs to do that. And the first argument is the range of values that you wanna find the maximum in. So that's gonna be our total. And the next argument is the first criteria range. So that's going to be the color column here. So we wanna see if that is equal to black. And then we also wanna test the size column here. 
and see if that's a large. And when we press enter, here we get 323. So that's the largest total value for any orders that are for a black colored item that is also large. So that's maxifs. It's going to allow you to calculate a maximum based on one or more criteria. We also have a min ifs function. So this is going to allow us to find the minimum value in a range based on one or more criteria. So in this example, let's find the minimum total value here based on a color of red and a large size. So let's use min ifs. And the first argument is the range of values we want to find the minimum in. So that's our total. And the next argument is our first criteria range. So for us, that's our color. And we want to test whether that's red. And our next argument is our second criteria. So that's going to be our size. And we want to test if that's large. And when we press enter, we get a value of 2,227. So that's the minimum value in our totals column for red and size large. So that's the min ifs function. We can calculate a minimum based on one or more criteria. The next function we're going to take a look at is the ifs function. So this is going to help you avoid nested if functions. So if you have to test multiple criteria and return results based on those criteria, then you're going to want to use the ifs function instead of using nested if functions. So in this example, we want to return a letter grade based on a score, and we're going to use ifs function to determine what that letter grade is. So our first test is going to be if our score is greater than 79. And if that's the case, then we're going to return a letter grade of A. And then we're going to test if our score is greater than 69. And that's going to be a letter grade of B. And then we're going to test if the score is greater than 59. And that's going to be a letter grade of C. And when it's greater than 49, that's going to be a D. And when it's greater than zero, that's going to be an F. And when we press enter and copy that down, we get our letter grade result. So that's the ifs function. It allows you to test multiple criteria and avoid using nested if functions. The last function we're going to take a look at is the switch function. So this is going to allow us to evaluate an expression. And then depending on the results of that expression, we can return a given value. So in this example, we've got some dates and we've got the corresponding weekday. So a one would represent Monday and a two would be a Tuesday all the way up to seven, which would be a Sunday. And we're going to use the switch function to return whether this is a weekend or a weekday. So the expression we're going to test is just our weekday. And then if that's a six, we're going to say that's a weekend. And if it's a seven, then we're also going to say that's a weekend. And we could specify for one through five that we have a weekday, but the switch function allows us to input a default value. So if we just have our last input as weekday, then that's going to be the value that's returned if we don't have a six or a seven. So if we press enter, here we can see that two is a weekday, that's a Tuesday. And here, for example, we have a six, that's a weekend, etc. So that's the switch function. It's going to allow us to evaluate an expression and then return a corresponding result based on the value 
of that expression. So those are the six new functions in Excel 2019. Some pretty powerful and useful functions there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. See you in the next one. Want more awesome Excel tips? Then sign up for my Excel newsletter. So the link for this is in the description below. And when you sign up for the newsletter, I'll send you a free copy of my Excel tips ebook. If you enjoyed this video, then you can help me out by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.